Hi everyone, it's Kathleen. We are here today to film three episodes of Stitch Play. This episode number 10 will be creating a yellow looped flower. The next episode I'll be filming today will be for this hollyhock. And the uh, third one that I'm going to film will be this trellis stitch. Just love how you can fill it up or you can just make one edge, but that's how I started to do the, or finished off my hollyhock. So let's start off with this yellow looped thread. I'm going to be using two colors of yellow. I'm going to be using Wonderfill. Size 8 is the thickness of it, and it's color 212. And I'm going to be using this Sue Spargo Wonderfill threads. And the color is Easy M for mixed, 79. And also another color, this coral color I'm going to use is also from Wonderfill, number eight thickness. And I'm gonna go with a color 922. Very quickly, when I buy from Wonderfill online, Wonderfill Specialty Threads, they make number eight, which is the most common thickness of pearl cotton, Elganza. They sell them in boxes of nine. You can create your own boxes. I, You could have nine different colors, or in my case, I, I use these three colors all the time. So I purchased these three colors that I'm using in my Journal of Stitchery, and I purchased three of each because I know I'm going to be embroidering lots. 922, Light Coral, 330, and 212 which is the honey yellow. And I like the box that it comes in for storage, and I just love pearl cotton because it is nice and smooth, and especially when you're working with this trellis stitch. So let's start creating this yellow looped, yellow looped flower. I'm going to be working on my sampler piece. My sampler piece is a piece of wool with circles tacked onto it. And I'm just stitching different stitches on here and adding it to my journal of stitchery. This piece happens to be four and a half inches by seven and a half inches. And that's because that's the pages that fit in my hardcover journal that I'm working on. My circles are one and a half inches in diameter. And I'm gonna start this, this, pe uh, this yellow petaled flower in this circle here. And I'm gonna draw three petals, a center petal, an outer petal, and another outer petal. Okay, and I'm gonna start with my dark coral. And I'm going to, all my, all my loopings will be right there. That will be right here at the tip of my stem, but still on my circle. So I want my, oops, wrong one. I want my coral, dark coral stitches to radiate from that focal uh, starting point at the stem, like that. So let's see. I want it to come out about here. So if I want to come out there, I don't want to work in my knot. I carry my knot. I, I anchor my knot further away and I sandwich it in between the circle and the backing fabric. So I'm in between my circle layers. So where do I want to come out? I want to come out. I'm going to anchor here. I want to come out right there. So let's go down. And here we are. And I'm going to make a nice long stitch like that. And I'm only going to, I'm going to knot it at the back because I'm going to carry it over. I'm going to, again, I start here, and I want to come out here. 
So if I want to come out there, instead of me carrying my thread and just coming out the front, I like to hide this stitch because I catch my threads on all sorts of things as I'm working. So it's just sandwiched. It's hidden in between there. So let's see where we want to come up. We're going to come up right there. So is that in the center? I'm a little bit off, so let's go here. And I'm just making a tacking stitch. And again, I just want to make sure that it is centered. And it's longer. The, the two outer tacking stitches are going to be shorter in length. The center one is going to be longer for my flower. Because that's what's nice on my eye. And then this next piece... out about here so I gotta sandwich that in between my two layers of wool and where do I want to come out see I'm pivoting because I want it to start at the exact same starting point is that one and now I can go down and this is where I come up is that right no I'm off to the side there just move it over just a hair and I want this right one the same length as the left one and is it pivoting at the top Okay, so those are our three anchoring stitches and that's all I need of the coral. So I'm going to knot it and I'm going to hide my tail in between my wool pieces in my circle and I'm just going to cut it off close to the wool because when it's left like this, it frays. That's way if it's hidden, the fraying could be hidden in between the two sandwich pieces. So I don't need this dark coral anymore. I'm gonna put it away. Now on this one, I started with the light variegated on either ends and then I had the dark in the center. I'm gonna do the opposite on this flower. So I'm gonna start with this bright yellow in the center. So I'm gonna take the bright yellow and you'll see how different the flower looks just by color and I keep saying color is everything to me because it is so let's go right here and again I want to anchor my thread and I'm not going to anchor it here because look it comes out it's just the backing I'm anchoring it within the circle now where did I say I wanted to anchor it I want to come out here so I'm just going to anchor it to the side so I'm coming in between the layers of fabric the two layers of wool. You don't have to work on wool, you can work on fabric. That's just what I choose to do. So I'm gonna come out right here. All my loops are going to, all three of my petals are going to be here. So now it's just a matter of going round and around. So I'm taking my, the blunt end of my needle, which is my eye, because that's sharp and I, I don't wanna pierce my fabric. I just want to go underneath. Just hang on a second. Oh, I, okay. I, oh, you know what? Okay, I forgot this last time. My memory's not very good. I need an anchoring stitch at the bottom. So my anchoring stitch, what do I want to use this? That's not very tight. Let's make ourselves an anchoring stitch. And let's just use, do I have clear? Clear, do I have? This is number five pearl cotton, what I've been using all the way around here, and it's ivory. So I'm just gonna make one anchoring stitch. So an anchoring stitch is a straight stitch. So I'm just gonna bring my ivory thread and 
where this yellow stitch is coming out. I'm going to come out as well and I'm going to go down in between my circle and my stem. There you go. So it just gives me one straight stitch to anchor all my circle pieces in. And I'm just going to make a knot and I'm going to go within the circle and hide my thread. scissors and I'm just going to cut it off right at the fabric. Okay, I don't need this ivory right now. So let's continue. We came up at the bottom with this yellow. I'm using the eye of the needle and I'm just going to go under that coral And I'm going to make a slight oval and I'm always going to go, okay, it looks like I'm going counterclockwise and I'm going to go under that little stem stitch, that little stem stitch, back stitch, stitch. So that's one circle. So let's go to And you just fluff it so it just goes around there so the the threads lay straight one circle two circles and I want the threads to lay on the outside nicely you see how nice it lies three and I'm holding my th with my thumb and my finger my circles so that's three and and I'm just Pulling it to lay flat, hold it, and this is four, lay it flat, and I'm holding it, going under again, so that's still four, and pull it. So this is big, very big, so you can see what you're doing. One, two, three, four, I want to do five, so I'm going to do of course, my flower on this Journal of Stitchery was smaller, and you can make them smaller. But this is a sampler, so I can see the stitches that I've made. Because my memory is not good to remember anymore, so I'm making these video diaries for myself. Five. Okay, I like the way that looks. I'm going to anchor it just, just really to the right side of that ivory stitch and down. I'm going to hold my circle so I don't pull too hard, so they're lying flat. Turning it over. And making a knot. And I'm going to hide this thread again in between the two layers here on the circle and the... Come on. There, now I can cut it. I'm going to put that away. Now I'm going to get my lighter threads. And I'm going to put the lighter ones on the sides. Oh, look at that. My last thread pulled, so you just... lay it straight again. So it lays nice and flat. You can see my lighter threads are underneath. I'm going to do these same, these yellow threads in the same manner. So I'm going to go, I have to come up here. So let's just bring our thread. We're going to anchor our thread. I don't know why it's so thick. There we are. Okay, I'm good. Oh, shoot, I'm a room. If you get a knot like this, a way to get rid of this little, this little loop and a knot Stick your needle in here, and it's it's either one of these threads that need to be pulled. So if you pull this one and nothing happens, it's tight, pull the other one. Whoops. Oops, just hang on here. I'm pulling with my needle and the thread, and when you pull it, it'll 
untangle. Okay, there we are. Lay this flat again. So let's go. And I want to come up. Okay, if I'm which I'll do this the left one first. So I'm going to come up on the left side of that stitch, but on the circle. And see if my needle just pulls the thread nicely. Okay, so I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I'm just going to go around. Let's see if I can do this laying down here. So I'm pulling this thread. That's one, one circle and I want to hold it. So one circle. And I'm going to go under this exact same ivory loop. So I'm holding these threads down from the bright yellow loops. So I'm going underneath and I'm going to make five. One, that's one circle. And I'm holding the loops. Let's pull it a little tighter here. So that's one. And you want a real long piece of thread as you see. That's two. Okay, I don't like the way this is laying because one of my threads is on the left side. So let's take this out. Sometimes brain forgets, so you got to fix it. So let's just take this light yellow thread out. Okay. To fix this, I am going to come out just like I did, but now I am going to feed my thread through that loop because we're always going through the loop. And you see how I'm just holding my bright yellow. We're always going through this loop to make the circle. So because I came out on the left side, on the other, when I do this right side, I'll come out on the right side of that thread, but I'm feeding it through the loop. So let's start by feeding it through the bottom loop to start on the right side. Could I have come up there? I guess I could have. Let's now continue. I need five circles. Oh, for crying out loud, I'm caught on my table. Got an iPhone balanced on a stand, which is balanced on a table. One circle. Two, and, and you're always going under that same loop, and look at this, it's not sitting properly, so you just got to maneuver it. Okay, so one, two, three, You don't have to lay them down side by side, but I my OCD makes me want to right now. If it gives me grief, I'll just let it go wherever it wants to later. Three. And they'll lay tighter if you do a smaller flower because I'm doing this flower as a sample for to show me how to do the stitch. That's why I've done it larger. And is this five? I think so. One, oh, just a moment here. Let's count. One, two, three, four. Yes, this is the fifth one. So I am going to go under that loop again. Okay. And that's the, oh dear Lord. Oh, doggy 
he's probably on the dining table sitting both of those dogs are probably on my dining table looking out the window one's a shepherd on my dining table and the other one's a little papillon husband lets them go on there so they're on there and he wonders why the the shepherd chews his stuff on the table well if you wouldn't let him on the table he wouldn't be chewing the stuff now would he or she oh well one and we're going to do the same thing with the right one so oops see my stitches are moving so move the thread i want to hold all of these stitches down oh thumb didn't finger didn't want to work one and two and three whoa you see i'm getting wonky here so i must not care three and four and and five so one more And I'm just going to go down. Oh, you saw how I pulled that? And here we are. Okay, so the, I did it in a big loop to show me how this little guy is done. So if you pull them tighter, there'll be longer, thick lines and for me, this is a visual reminder of how I do the stitch because I can actually see those threads lying down there. So <laughs> look what I did. Honest to gosh. Really? Really? Okay, so I have this. I haven't knotted it yet. Let's... Okay, I've just left that as is, but let's... Let's thread this again. And to show you that you can do something else with that stitch as well, let's make a, a whoa, a small French knot at the, let's make a knot first because I don't want my threads to move. So let's make a knot and right here, I want to come out over here. So let's, hide our thread or we're, we're dragging our thread in beneath carrying our thread in between the two pieces of wool I'm going to come out and I'm doing this in yellow to show show how I did the stitch if I would have done it if this stitch if I would have been using coral dark coral thread it could have been a pistol stitch but right now you know that it's a just a straight stitch and it's going to be a French knot a French knot or a colonial knot I'm going to do a colonial knot. So colonial knot is looped. You make a loop up and around clockwise. Your needle hits the thread, finger around. And you see how I'm not letting go of that thread. Gord my needle and down at the tip. Now I'm pulling my thread snugly, not too tight because you want your needle to, and I'm holding with my fingernail and my thread and at the back and there we go. That's one nice colonial knot. Because I'm moving across my fabric, I am making a knot. Most people don't make knots at the back. I do because I carry my threads a distance because I hate cutting my threads. I want it to come up there. I carry my thread under and I want to make another little colonial knot. I want to come up where that coral is, coral is coming up. And yes, my needles get unthreaded because I need a large eye to see how to thread my needle. Okay, colonial knot again. Arc the thread up and clockwise, needle touches the thread, finger around, make a hole, 
pull snugly. Hold it with, hold the knot with your fingernail and finger and pull. And that's one beautiful colonial knot. Repeat one more time. So knot, I wanna come out somewhere there. So I'm going to, you could see my, my needle moving in the middle of those two pieces of fabric. And let's come up. At the tip of that dark coral, colonial knot, arc your thread up and clockwise. Needle hits the thread, finger around, go down, pull snugly, hold, hold, and let's pull. Uh oh, <laughs> I got caught and pull. There, pretty, pretty. That's it for me to show you how to do that wonderful little, little yellow looped flower, I'm gonna call it. And I'm just gonna anchor this little guy in between here and cut that off. There, there we have it, our yellow looped flower on our sampler piece. So we will sign off for now and I will go on my next recording to record the Hollyhocks. See you in the next stitch play. Bye for now.